right, today is March 2nd, 2020. And I'm in here with uh, the Red Baron, as her name is starting to be known by. And um, AKA November 139er Quebec for Queen. Yeah, Red Baron female. You didn't know that? All right. <clears throat> I tell you what, anything a guy climbs into has got to better be female. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Enough said. So what we're, we have here, we have the plane back inside from where we were parked down there at the end. And um, I'm commissioning Al to remove and replace the left engine throttle cable which is excuse me is this long this long shaft going up and down connected to the white pipe and the mixture and the throttle cable and it's got to then come out and through here so then the cable gets that out. Let's zoom a little bit in on that. So the cables, as you can see, that's that's one cable. Oh no, that's a uh, temperature. So the cable, standard looking cable like, and uh, and the so you have mixture, throttle, and prop, and we're replacing the throttle, the swedge fitting up where it connects to the Y pipe is coming loose and there's free play in the throttle cable to a point to where that could come apart. So we've got, I went and got a replacement, Crockett Leasing had bought a replacement. Um, comes with everything all the way, including to the micro switch. So what I have done is I've opened up all the access panels all the way inside all the way down inside the floorboards uh, that come, where this comes out the cables where are the cables are underneath what, no yeah they are cables are right here and they go into the fuselage right there and then they go around behind the back behind the back of the foot pedals rudder pedals and then come up behind and then to the dash where the throttle quadrants are and so you have three you have three mechanical cables one for prop one for throttle and one for mixture and on this one the throttle on the bitter end where it ends so to speak where the cable goes into the swedge at the fitting is starting to come loose at the fitting so primary engine primary work al is working on that He's going to, and I'll, I'll help out where need me. I've got all the, all the L, uh, loop clamps, Adele clamps. I got all the Adele clamps off, uh, inside. And then all he has to do is disconnect at the throttle quadrants and at the cable in and work it. And then, uh, I'll help. And then I put everything back together. So, but I'm leaving that work for Al. Again, this is the primary engine. So what they mean by a primary engine on a twin engine airplane is when the propeller is going around, the bite coming down and the angle, if you're slow and what have you, thrust is more on this side on the blade than it is on this side. So if you are, if this engine goes bad, um, this engine is still running. This is the critical engine to continue to run and it, has more of a center line thrust and not quiet and not causing so much yaw and having to put so much rudder. But for happen if this engine fails and then this engine is running, uh, to me, both engines are critical, but what they, what they're saying, what, what is meant by a critical engine is now the thrust instead of being on the inside on the other one, it's on the outside. So when the main thrust is being pushed clear out here, which creates a real bad yaw thing 
bad if you lose that engine on takeoff and you're below minimum controllable and you don't let up the throttle and just cut cut both throttles and land her straight in and whatever you got or at least throttle back until you can get a hold of the horse but you got to pull back the pull back the reins if you're not fast enough on takeoff as soon as you're within a couple hundred feet and all of a sudden you something ain't going right and you're getting a bad yaw well this that engine fails and you've got x pretty much it's like excess power excess thrust it's not really thrust but it's excess so to speak thrust off the prop just will draw it through the apex will drive it over and usually turns upside down and goes in right around right the end of the runway this is the most dangerous thing of a twin engine airplane especially when it doesn't have asymmetrical thrust or maybe that's what we have is asymmetrical so yeah symmetrical thrust is where one in the one engine spin in this way and this engine spin in the other way where bo so both engines can play the critical role where if you lose one engine most of your thrust is going right across your inboard along your fuselage that's where you have counter rotating props most of these small twins lighter twins this isn't this is not a small twin it really it, after having the other twins in here this this plane takes up the entire hangar yeah no other plane i've seen in here so far comes close to this thing this thing is in re in in relation re relationship aspect ratio this thing is really uh much larger than a your normal general AG, general aviation aircraft i.e i it's what i kind of refer to the smallest airline commuter possible i mean you can always use a 172 but this is this is more practical safety of mind if you lose an engine 80 80 20 rule 80 percent of the time if you lose an engine you're okay it's that 20 percent time and lose an engine you're not ready for and especially if it's all on this engine and so all the force and all the money and all the maintenance over the years kind of stopped about here and went all through the fuselage for the most part landing gear is a little bit it needs, it's been lubed so every year it gets at least gets lubed you know it hasn't been sitting that way meaning it's getting it gets an annual this thing has had an annual every done throughout its life i mean this wasn't a hanger queen you know it didn't fly for much for the last couple years but the annuals were done now when i bought it it was out of annual and so in the process connie offered the ferry permit and ferried over here so that we can do the work and get the annual done so what i'm what we're going through is this is all a good engine it's all squared away you know i'm sure it's got some issues from sitting but i think we just get to working it and running it and cleaning her up um while we focus on this engine and get this one squared away and get this just to the same condition as the critical engine so small general aviation twin engine airplanes critical engine is the one that bites in closest to the fuselage so that's my lesson for the day i guess it, just taking it all in so what i'm working on today is getting her up on jacks got the front wheel off a little bit and we'll work cleaning I'm gonna get some uh good old old school aviation grade fuel cleaning and and parts washer brush and all up inside underneath all up in the landing gear everything all these all this area i'm going to crawl up underneath there with rubber gloves and av gas and wash it down onto this catch plate and wipe her down with good with a rag and then check for wear and tear and service and condition and then get with it with a grease gun and then the next step is to continue to raise this up on jacks where i can then do the same thing and move pressure off of the landing gear so i can inspect it i know that landing gear knuckle the brace on this other landing gear is really wobbly most i've ever seen on a beechcraft so that tells me that that thing's got when you land that thing is almost developing a shimmy it's that it's got that much free play in the joint there that a shimmy could happen so maybe that's what's anyway 
it's just simple bushings. What it is is time and material, you know, time to get it apart and change out the hardware. Probably change. I could. I think the whole hardware kit probably is less than a hundred bucks, and that includes taking the whole thing apart and putting new O-ring seals in it. You know, I mean, completely resealing it. Re put new bushings in all of it. Remount the bushings so they match the bolts and um, reassemble it with the appropriate hardware, new-ish or at least in really good condition better than what's probably in there because i think you know a lot of what i'm finding a lot of little hardware stuff is hit its service limits and it's you know things on this, so the, the rule of thumb on this airplane and pretty much all but at a commercial level is everything is at a thousand hours so no matter what you look at i don't care if the seals on the door around the window what it Everything's a thousand hours. Now, some is 500 hours, some is 1500 hours, some stuff is 2000 hours. But for the most part, it's rule of thumb is there, you know, everything go around, you can go all the way around the airplane and everything has at least a thousand hour, pretty much they call TBO, you know, or time for, you know, until it's done. It's, it's served its time, you know, I mean, it's a, but this most general aviation aircraft never received that. They buy the plane as is, fix a couple things for the most part, and just continue to fly it, you know, and that's what's happened here. So a lot of these thousand hour things that need to really kind of, you know, at least do a, a visual inspection to see a, the con material condition of the item. It doesn't mean necessarily a thousand hours does it have to be overhauled, but it it means you've gone and you've done uh, the whole inspection, including using the micrometers and bore gauges and, you know, actually measuring it. I mean, go, no, you, use your go, no go gauges and you reassemble. And that's fine. I, and that at the operational level, especially general aviation, that works great. You, as long as you're supervised and you're working with your AMP and what have you. So we're, since the plane, I have the opportunity to have the plane in as long as I can until Al needs to put that one way out there. Let's see if it comes in. Try not to. No. Don't focus in. There's a little single engine Piper, I think. And Al's working on his commercial. So he's got his hands full and not really going to be working on airplanes. But he's still around enough doing his flights that he comes in and we talk and show him through. So I got this all set up for him when he's ready. And I've got the new parts. So yeah, I got them set up over here that I got the new end. So every, on these cables, they all have this ball end that where it connects. I think this is the This is the one I'm replacing, actually. Yeah, this is the mixture. This, so this is the cable. On this side, the, so the other side is the throttle cable. And on this side, the mixture cable is bad. It's really stiff, even with nothing, what you mean, completely laid out and straight. And it's come loose from its housing. And we have a new, um, oops, we have a new um, uh, cable. But what I was getting at is on all of them, what I've bought is the new ends. All the, so these, all the bitter ends of the cables, the cables that are good, but at the end, all of these, um, eyelets are shot. This one's very shot. Won't move around. So I ordered, uh, a dozen new ones. And I'll, <clears throat> at first we're going to change all, cause they're the same on both in, those, those eyelets are on same on both ends of the cables. So it's the same part number, um, on both ends that where it terminates on both ends. Um, but I'm going to start first. I only got five so far that's made it in shipping and we'll work on the, uh, actually on the throttle quadrants and cable change the cable ends on the throttle quadrants. Um, so we do have some new parts in, but in the meantime, since it's inside, you know, a lot of work can be done outside if need be. Um, while I'm in the shop, I'm going to take advantage of the tools that are in the shop while I can, because I got a lot of work back there in the shelves and back on the bench and 
all the little interior pieces that are shot or broke or need repair or replaced, all that stuff, you know, all the cowling that goes around, all needs to be cleaned up, new baffling, all that stuff can be done with the airplane parked outside. So while we're inside, we want to work on things and take advantage of our opportunity here while we have it. Um, Cause we, we're, uh, we move in and out as needed. So if Al needs to move that plane or another plane in, we move out and that couldn't ask for a better deal, to be honest with you. It's uh, working out really well. Um, cause just cause I move the plane out, I can come back here and work on the little stuff. That's yeah. So they we're, we're good to go. Um, so right now I'm working on trying to get it up off both wheels on the come up but without lifting the front wheel up you know too far off the ground so i've got got the jacks underneath and i just started raising this end or this side the port side and um front wheel come off the ground about an inch and a half or an inch or so so i, I put a full stop that's all i needed right now to do what i need to do um for the most part but what I wanted, what, you know, what I ideally is to get this thing both sides up so all three tires are up and free to swing and I can kind of take some, relieve the pressure off the landing gear. But I rigged this up, rigged this up here so if it, so it won't, it's chained to the deck. So hopefully this will keep it stable while I move it up front. It won't fall down and won't rise up. <clears throat> so anyway, next spot I'll sh will be an inspection of the front nose gear. And that will be a wrap.